uh, let's look at that. Uh, it says uh, so pi ratio, blah, blah, blah. Model the pi ratio as a short bar of some mass so that uh, that swings from, from a pivot so that distance from pivot is L. All right, uh, a pivot to the center of the mass. All right, I guess that's somehow important. Um, bottom of the bar is I oh, I think that non-uniform thing um, is what we are not going to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> um, we want to design the pi ratio so that at the position of maximum height, the riders in the middle briefly feel weightless. That seems like an important piece of information, so we'll keep that. Um, if the maximum angle pi right next with the ship is vertical, 60 degrees, so it's giving you the information, uh, what is the maximum angle for the pi ratio ship, and this theta max is, um, equal to 60 degrees. Um, what is the angular acceleration of the pirate ship about the pivot point and at the position of maximum height? So I, this information briefly feel weightless is still important. So if you are imagining the pirate ship this way, where it's hanging off to the side, and you have passengers within the pirate ship ride, that if they are feeling weightless, then I actually know the acceleration of the passengers. You only ever feel weightless. This is a bit of a semantic paradox. You only feel weightless when the only force, you, the only force on you is gravitational force or your weight. So when you feel weightless, it's not the weight that's gone, it's the, the it's all the other forces that provide you with a feeling of weight. So I can say that, oh, the passenger is accelerating downward at G. And in fact, since uh, um, the passenger and the vehicle is accelerating at the same time together, so they are both accelerating downward at G. So with that information, then I think I know uh, how to calculate the angular acceleration about the pivot point here, there's no other force that's going to um, um, so what I know uh, about the, the forces on the this object about this pivot point is that um, this uh, gravitational acceleration or rather I guess to be more specific, the gravitational force mg is the only force that can uh, provided this um, uh, swinging motion. So I can say, um, so I can say, okay, so the angular acceleration is going to be simply a field associated with this force. Then what you have to look at is, all right, um, so we are looking at how quickly is this rotating backward. And you should have this uh, relationship between translational and rotational quantities somewhere in your note that change in the angle is equal to the change in the tangential length, let me call it L, arc length, divided by, um, uh, divided by the radius. So here, when you are looking for the angular acceleration, what it should be, uh, yeah, what it should be is the linear or tangential acceleration divided by the radius of the um, radius of the motion and that's just gonna be uh, regular L. So, um, so really the um, work that you need to do is to figure out the tangential component of the uh, tangential component of the, the acceleration. And um, hopefully with all the practice you've had with the inclined planes or, or whatnot, uh, you have some sense of how to find that. Um, so this alpha angle is here. So that means tracking through all the geometric identities that alpha, uh, alpha um, angle can be, or uh, sorry, what am I talking about alpha? Uh, that angle here, there, that's the, uh, my maximum angle theta max of 60 degrees. And looking for that angle on this side of the diagram here, 
this should be the same as the 60 degrees. So it will be a theta max of uh, 60 degrees. Then, all right. Um, oh yeah, then it's just a matter of figuring out this tangential component here. Uh, and you can do that through this, uh, this right triangle here. Uh, let me blow that up. It should look something like this, right angle here. And this is uh, a tangent, uh, or sorry, not a tangent. It's the tangential acceleration. And, um, and this hypotenuse is G. So uh, the tangential acceleration is G, uh, G cosine theta or cosine of 60 degrees since uh, this should be 60 degrees. Um, yeah, so that should give you what the tangential acceleration is. You plug that in here to get the angular acceleration. Um, and uh, that's what it's asking for. Oh, and I guess it's asking for the, the what is it? At the position of maximum high. Well, it's not asking for that, but it is asking for angular acceleration of the pi of what the pivot point. And what I laid out here is how you do calculate it. Um, it says, for safety reasons, we want structural support to be strong enough to hold the ship at rest. Um, find the value of this maximum applied torque. Well, then it's a matter of um, uh, kind of working this out. So you have pirate ship that's uh, hold, holding off to the side, and you want the net torque to be equal to zero. Um, I might not be asking this exact question. It has some flavor of being about static equilibrium, which we are not covering in this uh, class. So, well, if you were to do it, so you'd have gravitational force mg, or you have angle between them theta there. So you can uh, calculate what the torque due to gravitational force is. That torque due to gravitational force is going to be, well, I mean, technically L cross mg, or in terms of the, just the magnitudes, it's going to be L times mg times sine theta. Um, so that's one source of torque. So whatever other torque we have should be countering that. So this is the torque uh, max from the pirate ship that should be able to uh, hold back the torque due to gravity on one of the rides and um, and yeah, once you, so this uh, should just equal minus absolute value of torque due to gravity. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, so part C is the one that I was saying, you don't need to worry about it, uh, where you are given the linear mass density and then have to work out the rotation inertia. I will ask you that at some point, but not on exam two. Uh, please focus on other types of questions for exam two. Um, so part, the D maximum torque found in B is applied. Oh, this is just asking you um, the Newton's second law that you know net torque is equal to rotation inertia times angular acceleration. Um, so if you say you are applying the maximum torque, then you know that to what your torque is, especially at the bottom when the pirate ship is at the. Uh, so when the pirate ship is at the bottom then there's no other force that could be applying torque other than the torque coming from, um, coming from the structure holding it. The gravitational force is just straight down. So uh, this uh, net torque, um, yes, um, so net torque is the same as the maximum torque. Um, and uh, I guess the, when the, this, the semester this question was written, uh, you were supposed to have found this I from part C. Uh, if I were to give similar question for this class, I'll you know, give you a way to figure out this uh, rotation inertia. Either you'll be able to look it up in a table that I'll be providing to you, or um, the question will somehow tell you what the rotation inertia.